Welcome back to another episode of the Bear Trap on the Boomer Bus channel, Bears podcast by Bears fan. I'm your host, Terry, and today we're talking about the case for Mike McGlinchey, tackle out of Notre Dame. All right, so uh, as I touched on a little bit ago, we'll get into the landscape of what drafting Mike McGlinchey would mean. So on our current roster, we have two, yes, one and two returning tackles, and those two happen to be our starters that is Mr. Charles Leno Jr. at left tackle and Bobby Massey at right tackle. Both who got a sizable contract or whatnot um, f- for their performance, I would say, not too long ago. Uh, as far as free agency, we have uh, Tom Compton, unrestricted, and Bradley Sowell. Compton, more of a five-position uh, swing guy that provided a lot of depth with our injuries this year. Filled in at guard and tackle at different places. So uh, definitely losing a lot of depth where the Bears kind of go with the philosophy of swing linemen who are able to play multiple positions. And so losing one of the uh, better ones definitely hurts our depth. So again, we're coming in with two tackles this season who are our starters. So of course we got to get bodies in there. Now you can... Possibly count Jordan Morgan, who is returning from the IR. He is going into his uh, second year. Yeah, he's a rookie this year. He's going to his, I believe, or third. Anyway, Jordan Morgan is someone that they kind of touted as a five-position lineman. I think he's going to end up ultimately being a guard, but he started out practicing at right tackle, so there might be possibly some depth there. But he's not a proven commodity, so not something I'm really counting on, especially with the health injuries or health concerns we had with the Chicago Bears. So anyway, Mike McGlinchey, what he does, he brings uh, immediate depth, of course, to a position that we need. But he brings immediate starter. Whether you're talking about uh, Charles Leno or Bobby Massey, he's better than both of them. Uh, both players can stand to be upgraded. Uh, in my opinion, Charles Leno is way better than Bobby Massey. And so I would, um, uh, probably look at having McGlinchey play the right side. Charles Leno possibly could play the right side. Uh, but he is more athletic and he's more cut, uh, cut out for the run game on the left side where we can do screens and a lot of movement. Uh, I wouldn't trust him to anchor the run game as much as I would trust McGlinchey. So really, you can do what you want there as far as left and right. But Charles has kind of been there. That's kind of what he knows. So why, uh, you know, hurt his development? If you got McGlinchey, just kind of plug McGlinchey in until you uh, get to a point where you could do something with Leno and move him or whatever you want to do. And then McGlinchey takes over as your left tackle. So there you go. Um, again, it's kind of like the corners. We need bodies there. So definitely, uh, as depth, I think you're still going to need more than that. Uh, McGlinchey is definitely not a guard. He doesn't really fit that swing lineman type, but he can play left and right tackle effectively being a run blocker and a pass blocker. So, all right. So talking about the case, uh, for and against Mike McGlinchey, number one, when you're talking about drafting him, he's the best tackle in, the draft. And so that's definitely, of course, my opinion, but I do, uh, do uh, evaluations. Offensive tackle was the first group that I did. And at the time I said, this is the best tackle, like by far. And even when you're talking about last year where it was a down year, but you had guys like Garrett Bowles and Ryan Ramchek, they went later in the first round, but still first round picks. And they both actually played pretty well when they got on the field. And so Mike McGlinchey, I think, is light years ahead of him. So I don't know if teams are a little scarred from what we've seen in the past with a um, Eric Fisher, with a Luke Jokel, with a um, Jawan James, with a Laramie Tunsil, all that. I don't know if that's the case or what, but for whatever reason, Early on in the season, I saw a lot of uh, media people, mock drafts, whatever, really having McGlinchey as like the third guy. And so having Orlando Brown ahead of him and having, uh, what's his face, Connor Williams ahead of him. 
And so for me, I thought that was odd. And I'm like, this guy is clearly better than all of them. And he's better than any tackle prospect we've seen in a little while. And so um, now that we're around the combine again later and new mock drafts, whatever, I see him being touted in the top 15 a lot more often where he should be. And then, of course, Mike Mayock named him his number one tackle. And then everybody wants to follow suit. So it's something that I've always said the whole time. This is like a top 10 talent. And now all of a sudden people are coming around to that. So he is the best tackle. No matter what the draft shakes out or what the draft stock says, he's the best tackle. And so at a position of need, getting the best player, doesn't hurt ever. We got to add talent no matter where it is on the roster. The second thing people will tell you is Trubisky is the most important part of the team. And with that being said, adding weapons and helping him develop is our number one priority. And so Mike McGlinchey fits that mold. Yes, we want a top flight receiver. Might not be one in this draft at eight. So getting a tackle is a great thing. Rather you, uh, whether you think he's there, supposed to be there or not, the fact is that getting a top tackle is going towards our bigger goal and helping Trubisky um, really solidify what he uh, can be. And so to that point, another um, reason for McGlinchey is that it allows us to uh, get rid of Bobby Massey or Charles Leno at some point. And people really... One of the big things uh, people really uh, are frustrated with is the fact that we had those two at tackle still and that we gave them money. And so people really want to start looking for a way out of that relationship and bringing in McGlinchey as a top flight 10 year starter. uh, You're not going to get rid of them right away. But as you get into the rest of the season, trade deadline or to next offseason, now you got the uh, leverage to really start moving those pieces. Uh, and then talking about some of the cases against McGlinchey. Uh, some people, actually, the number one thing I think you'll hear is eight is too high for McGlinchey. And I kind of addressed that before. The the narrative out there is that, you know, you can get McGlinchey and um, outside of the top 15 or the back end of the first. Not the case at all. I mean, let the media tell you that, but I think even the media is still starting to turn around on what he actually is now that they're seeing some of the professionals talk about what he actually is. And then on top of that, you want to talk about uh, Orlando Brown, uh, what he did at the Combine pretty much is going to solidify McGlinchey's going up. I mean, I don't think Orlando Brown ever was a real threat to go in front of McGlinchey. But what he did in the combine is definitely going to um, push up McGlinchey because now he's not as viable as a tackle as he was before. And McGlinchey's looking a lot better. Um, and that probably is a case for McGlinchey, not against him. Because, again, getting him at eight is probably the thing because you probably won't be able to get him after that. And again, I'm not talking about trade back scenarios, but this pretty much is letting you know he probably is in the range of top 10 right now. And that's probably where you're going to have to get him. Um, and then going against McGlinchey. So like I said, the other, one of the other cases, as I said before, there are other good tackles. And I agree. There's some good tackles in this class. Um, I still think Mike McGlinchey is the best, but there's some that feel Connor Williams isn't far off. And I feel, uh, I feel that way. I think McGlinchey has a decent margin ahead of him, but Connor isn't a bad uh, second choice. And so then we talk about the question of, well, instead of trying to force tackle at eight, could we go back to get a player that can give us something similar? And that's a legitimate argument that you got to bring up. Um, But I I, I think – if you're talking about what's the priority, that's what it always comes down to. And as the Bears, we know that we have a number of priorities. And so that that might be a case against him um, that people will bring up. And then uh, I would tell you, I don't know how legit this is, but some people say they don't think he's a left tackle. He's a right tackle only. Again, you know, you can have a debate if it matters that the Bears need help at that position either way. And um, 
you know, with some people returning from injury, we should be looking pretty good on the interior. Uh, we definitely want to bring in another interior lineman. And so bringing McGlinch at right tackle isn't going to hurt. And so, again, that's kind of up to you and who you listen to. I tell you that I think he can play left tackle all day. That's me. Uh, and then I guess this, I don't know if this is a positive or negative. It's the same thing I said for us, uh, Quinn Nelson. We have his offensive line coach. We know exactly what it is he can and can't do. Or I should say the Bears know what he is he can and can't do. And we know exactly how we can use them. So that is another positive for drafting McGlinchey, much like it is for Quentin Nelson. So, uh, yeah, I, I really think that I'm interested to hear the debate right there. I know on initial draft, some people are going to just say, no, 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 not at all. You know, we, we, that's too high for McGlinchey. But I really would ask you to stop and think. First of all, we know. The premier positions, quote unquote, that people say need to be drafted in the top 10 and left tackle has always been one of them. And so my question to you is, if you got all these guys I named before, Luke Jokel, Eric Fisher, uh, Lane Johnson, Laramie Tunsil, blah, 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 blah. If you got all these other people touted as top five picks, then why wouldn't McGlinchey? Um, maybe you listen to somebody that gives you an opinion that he doesn't have this or that, but I, I, I tell you he has the full package in my opinion. And so if he has the full package, he's every bit of six, eight, he's every bit, uh, as strong as Quinn Nelson. Well, not every bit, but just as strong for the tackle position and has put on production at a high level at Notre Dame then why shouldn't we pick them? Now, uh, this isn't supposed to be me saying yes or no, but I'm just trying to frame the mindset because I think a lot of our Bears fans are just in the thought that no, not at all. At eight is way too high. But I, I, I would tell you to reconsider it. Take the name out. You're talking about a tackle, a top flight left tackle that's going to be there for 10 years that can play left or right. Is he worth that number eight pick? That's the way I would think about it. So anyway, go to the comment section. Let me know. Start that debate. Tell me uh, if you like McGlinchey. Do you think it's too high? Do you honestly think he'll be there if you trade it back into the late uh, first round? Or the other positions that you just strongly feel come first? Go to the comment section. Let me know. Thumbs up, subscribe. And remember, stay up and bear down.